In this video we're looking at quick, uh, quickly looking at uses of radioactivity. Now the first one, background radiation, is not really a use, but uh, it does support um, theories such as the Big Bang. Uh, and what is the background radiation? Background radiation is uh, the static that you see on the TV. Um, let's see if I can draw an old TV box with the uh, aerial there. You see sort of static on the screen and uh, that, that's the, the signal from the random electromagnetic radiation that you get in the background. Remember, background radiation is mostly gamma radiation um, because alpha and beta, um, they are too ionizing. That means they um, knock electrons off um, and uh, ionize the air around them and, and different things like that. So because they're charged particles, because they're moving fast, and because they're of heavy masses, they tend to knock into those things, whereas gamma is uh, not. Uh, it's just a light, light ray, photons. Um, but another use is carbon dating. Uh, so you can use the uh, the half-life, half life, which, remember, was symbol lambda. Um, and you can look at the amount of um, carbon-14, um, which is radioactive. And uh, I'm not sure if it's radioactive like that, but it, it decays over uh, nine, once you know um, the levels that it had initially. Um, for instance, there's a constant amount of carbon-14 produced in the upper atmosphere from cosmic rays. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's how the story goes. And uh, so there's a constant amount of um, this carbon-14 in in uh, plants and people and everything while they're alive. But when they die. Um, they they uh, stop inducing from the air because they're not taking in air anymore, and they stop uh, taking in any more carbon-14. So they measure the levels um, and compare them to the chart, and however the levels are, whatever the levels are, is how far uh, how old they were. So the half-life of carbon-14 is uh, about 5,000 years. Um, we'll just check that. 5,730 years is um, so 5,730 years. Practically speaking, that means you can only go back maybe up to 20, 25,000 years um, before the levels start getting, um, you know, the zero bars and all sorts and the range is not that great. Um, interesting though, it's also speculated um, that longer uh, half-life materials, that like billions of years half-lives, um, it's a, uh, we, we're only looking at like a tiny little fraction of time compared to the half-life of those things, so we have no way of, of fully knowing um, how they react over the long periods of time. We'd think it would hold true, but um, it's not necessarily, so that's a good avenue for investigation if someone really clever wanted to come up with a way of um, looking into that in a little bit more, seeing if the rates were the same, if it's accelerated, if it's decelerated. Okay, radiotherapy. Let's go to a different colour. Um, radiotherapy is uh, when you take radio, use radiation to um, to kill, uh, for instance, cancer cells. Um, you might know somebody who has had chemotherapy, and um, the, that's that's a little bit different from radiotherapy. Um, chemotherapy takes um, uh, uh, drugs that are toxic. Um, but that will stick to, they will stick to the cancer cells more readily than other cells, and they kill them. Um, radiotherapy shines uh, beams of radiation from several different directions, which concentrates it in that area where they all pass through. So, if you imagine you've got a beam going this way, that's the thickness of the beam, and you have a beam going this way, which is the thickness of that beam, that area there gets double the dose, and you can send the beam from this angle, and you get triple the dose. And that's where hopefully you'd target, you know, do it in three dimensions, and that's where you'd target your cancer. So all of these things are quite harmful to um, the physical bodies as well, um, but that's how you can use radiation. The chemotherapy, um, there are other alternatives as well, where you, um, the chemicals, because that's why it's chemo, chemical therapy, you uh, attach radioactive um, isotopes as part of those chemicals, um, and then those radioactive isotopes decay uh, because those chemicals are attracted to the cancer cells. Very, very clever um, uh, systems that they use there. So that's radiotherapy. Sterilization. Um, you can bombard uh, microorganisms with radiation and it kills them. So uh, that's that's pretty much how sterilization works. Um, so if you've got, say, medical equipment, you've got jars and, 
and syringes and that's a big syringe and um, uh, all of that kind of stuff put them in a container without having to get them wet or anything and just bombard them with lots and lots of electromagnetic radiation um, to kill all the organisms so smoke detectors is the other one uh, which is the last one I'm going to deal with um, and smoke detectors typically have a small uh, alpha source if I'm, if I'm remembering right and um, those alpha sources like they might have a source here and very similar to Rutherford's experiment and they'll have a detector um, over here, D for detector because I don't know how to draw one and um, periodically you have uh, alpha particles coming out and hitting the detector and letting it know everything's okay but when you have smoke come in that um, makes the alpha particles more readily ionized because the smoke is more dense than air and uh, the and then you, this beam is cut off so the detector stops detecting and goes problem and and then that's when you get the smoke alarm going off um, now it's very important you have to consider the half-life of the radioactive materials you're using for smoke alarms it's no good using something with a half-life of seconds um, because it'll run out and you'll have to replace your smoke alarm um, after a very short period of time but most smoke alarms have a long like a uh, number of years, 10 years or more life lifespan. Um, for radiotherapy you don't want the, um, the you don't want the half-life to be long because it'll hang around in your system for ages hurting you, damaging you really really bad for you. Um, for carbon dating we've talked about that already and sterilization likewise you want a very short half-life. So there you go, lots of cool engineering principles.